Are you operating and timing and everything? Yeah. Do we need to swap and help? That's okay. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. And welcome to week five. Can you believe it? Five weeks ago, we started this. Now, I've got a little question for you this evening. Do you want to be an entertainer? Or do you want to be a motivator? Now, you might ask, what's the difference? Well, one of the problems with Toastmasters, the structure of Toastmasters uh, speaking, is that it's mostly entertaining. A motivator, on the other hand, leaves the audience to actually take action at the end of it. Now, it doesn't matter with this uh, air study. You can be either, whatever you want to be. But if you want to actually start being a motivator, then I suggest that at the end of your speeches, they come to a conclusion. Uh, and like, if you like, Aesop's fables. They all have more to the story. And from that moral of that story, you have a next step. I mean, some of you might think, well, the next step might be to uh, contact me on my website or something like that. But I'll suggest the next step may be something actionable that the audience could do. Now, I've sprung on to you today, so I don't expect you to be doing that, unless you want to, of course. But from next week, if you'd like, I said it's entirely up to you, it's completely uh, optional. If you want to become a motivational speaker, as opposed to just an entertaining speaker, I strongly encourage you to start putting next steps on at the end of it and a, a moral to your stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you all excited then? Are you ready? Uh, <laughs> <Kate is>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think at least four of you are totally unprepared, so it's going to be an interesting evening. Yeah, of course again. Sorry, I didn't finish. No, it's okay, go on. I just have to check with the um, amber and the red time. Is that amber a minute to the red? Or is it, yes. Yeah. Is there any chance one can have like two minutes? No. I'll try to remember. <laughs> it's going to be difficult for me to actually remember. So I've never done the time before, believe it or not. Well, maybe that's a good reason, though. Maybe you've hit the speech competition. It's like London. <laughs> There was a chat in the station in the head, so you can see the other side. So you ask for prompts every minute, which you could understand, and it was giving you some idea. But that's not all my claim, is it? I'll tell you what I do sometimes when I speak. You know the lecture? Yeah. I put my uh, phone on there, and I just set the stopwatch going, yeah. and I just sort of glance at it, so I know roughly where I am in the speech. Of what happens with me is when I press that, I go, oh, it's a book. Yeah, no, you don't, you, don't, you don't start talking straight away, you sort of wait for 30 seconds or something like oh, that. Oh, that's a good idea, because I think, goodness, it's going into the yeah. <laughs> Right, the other thing I'd like to cover is feedback. I thought tonight, I uh, was expecting just more to be here, but tonight I think we'll start uh, being a bit sharper with our feedback. So, as um, Nikki put it, two stars and a wish. So, for instance, I, I want you to do it in one sentence. So, first star, one sentence, uh, a wish, some improvement, one sentence, and then finally, another star, one sentence. So, I could say tonight, uh, you've been a fantastic group, you have really gelled together and you're making fantastic progress. I wish our feedback could be a little sharper. And finally, I'm really looking forward to tonight because I'm the entertaining the speeches was fantastic last week. Yeah? I think it would do us good to practice being very much more sharper with our um, feedback. Particularly in life, we don't get much time, do we? Okay, who's first up? So, Mara, yes. could you like to tell me your type of your speech when you get up there? Hello. No. The title of my speech is The Happiness Magnet. The Happiness Magnet. Happiness Magnet. Yeah. You let me know when I should start. When you like. Okay. So, you might expect me to talk about happy things with this topic, right? What I want to ask you right now is, what do you think is the leading cause of disability in the world? Any? Of what, sorry? Disability 
what well, you cannot go to work or you cannot take care of your family. Depression. Exactly. That's the leading cause in the world. Anxiety and depression and health, <laughs> mental health is a, a big problem in the world right now. Before, like thousands or hundreds of years ago, we had to deal with wild animals trying to survive. But now we have pretty much everything solved in some way, especially living in a developed country like here, where you have food, you have health, you have education. Um, I was reading about that. I don't know, sometimes I feel like life sends you messages. And I was reading about that a couple of times, and I read that 800,000 people took their lives in the last year. That's, that's just massive. And just imagine that one of those 800,000 could be my brother that I love him more than anything, or my father who's alone in Colombia, or maybe in the future my children, because I might be too busy trying to pursue money or success. Um, that just kills me. Why we have everything, but we don't have... Why we have so empty inside if we have big pockets, food, everything? And I've been reading a lot about it, and looking at the people at my office, someone was just signed off from work because she's very depressed, she cannot work, and she's absolutely lovely, she's just adorable. One of those people that you just want to hug her every time you met her. And I was like, why? Why is that? And I've been always really, really curious about this topic, because although I consider myself a very positive person and very optimistic, I've been through very difficult periods in my life as well, where I just don't know what's the purpose of being alive. And it's really dark, and it's really painful. 